Hi, I'm Kenny Yates. Welcome to Hold the Hope. And this is a regular weekly message. And today's message is entitled, Watchman, What Time of the Night? See, God has made us Christians watchmen on the wall. We're to, to announce peace. We're to announce war. We're to announce glory days. And we are to announce danger. We're to announce whatever time of the day whatever time of the night it is, and whatever situation that we find ourselves in, we are to announce it if we are the watchmen on the wall. Please turn with me to Isaiah chapter 21, verse 11 and 12. The oracle concerning Duma is calling to me from, from Seir. Watchman, what time of the night? Watchman, what time of the night? The watchman says, morning comes and also the night. If you will inquire, inquire. Come back again. This is an oracle concerning Duma. The word Duma appears four times in scripture, and each time is in regards to a place, or in one situation, is in regards to a person. But it can also mean silence. So if we were to translated silence and the literal translation of this would be masa meaning oracle duma silence hora meaning calling out el nai meaning to me men meaning from and seer is seer the land therefore if we did that literal translation, the verse could read or could be translated as an oracle of silence calling out to me from Seir. Now, Seir was the land of Edom, the land where Isaac's eldest son, Esau, settled. Remember that the people of Edom did not follow the ways of their father, Abraham and Isaac. They followed the ways of their mother's people. The people that Esau married into, they were idol worshippers. They had rejected God. Therefore, there had been a long, deafening silence from Seir to the Lord. They did not call on his name, and they did not acknowledge him as God. The thing is, when contrast to today, the world has, has not been calling on the name of Jesus. Neither have they been acknowledging him as God. So the silence is, is now calling out to God, just like Jesus said in Luke chapter 19, verse 14. He answered, and this is Jesus speaking, he answered, I tell you, if these be silent, the very stones would cry out. So if we hold our tongues, the silence itself will cry out to God through the watchman. Watchman, what time of the night? Then he repeats himself. Watchman, what time of the night? This gives some insight as to the direness of the situation. There seems to be a certain level of anxiety, of apprehension on the side of the seeker. Today, we are living in a time of trepidation, a time of perplexity. Fear is weaponized and the people cower from it. Panic is on every side. One word, whether it's a real word or not real, send, send the whole population into a frenzy, causing lines upon lines, Test upon test, shots upon shots. For them, the modus apparatus is create a crisis, bring the solution, enjoy the desired outcome. It's like enjoying the spoils of war for those who are in charge. Fear is like a liquid toxin that saturates the people and causes them to think irrationally. It is like the Stockholm Syndrome sets in. The, the victims are forced to compromise their lives and the lives of their loved ones. Yet, they sincerely believe the perpetrators are looking out for their best interests. It's 
their coping mechanism for survival, I suppose. If anyone tries to explain the flaws in their way of thinking, they will fly into a rage and defend the perpetrators, even though it's plain, plain that they mean them great harm. They never actually get around to asking the right questions or hearing the right answers. They just blindly follow. In our scripture, the asker does not actually ask. He does not actually inquire. He merely says, watchman, what time of the night? Watchman, what time of the night? There's a question we all need to ask at this hour in, in our history of time. There is an appointed time, a time appointed by God himself when he will judge all the earth. The whole earth will be judged by God. There is a time of night that is coming. Jesus said in John chapter 9 verse 4, We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. The days are getting shorter and shorter. Have you noticed that? One day rushes into another. The weeks blur together and months melt into years. And years pass as months. They, that could only mean one thing. Look at what Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. We must be vigilant. We are to keep our eyes open. We are to command, or we are commanded to watch and to pray. For the end of all things is at hand. We are living in a time of darkness. Christianity, Christians, and Jesus himself are all under attack. Our beliefs are rendered antiquated and politically incorrect at best. If you notice, Christianity is the only religion whose beliefs are, uh, and practices are belittled and whose deity is blasphemed daily. It is a time of darkness and, and with the whole world battling an unseen elusive enemy. Shutdowns and shutups. Shortages and scarcities, lack and needs going unfulfilled, panic everywhere. That is the day that we're living in. Watchman, what time of the night? Watchman, what time of the night? What is happening, watchman? What is going on? Is the night almost over? Is there any relief in sight? Seems to me he is trying to find out how much longer he has to suffer. How much longer they are terrified by the night. Almost like the souls under the throne in Revelation chapter 6 verse 9 through 11. When he opened the fifth seal I saw under the altar the, the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and for the witness they had borne. They cried out with a loud voice, O oh, sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long before you will judge and avenge your blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then they were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers should be complete, who were to be killed as they themselves had been. Watchmen! How much longer are we to wait for the night to be over? The watchman replies, the morning is coming, but also the night. The answer is somewhat cryptic. It's somewhat mysterious. Or I should say it's a whole lot mysterious. The night, the morning is coming, but also the night. Almost like he builds him up, only to knock him down again. The morning is coming, but also the night. What does he mean, the morning is coming, but also the night? Is it not night right now? Is there not panic in the streets right now? Is there not unrest and uneasiness and foreboding everywhere right now? Widespread anxiety, everyone just waiting for some good news, some good news of relief. 
So pray, tell, what do you mean the morning is coming, but also the night? Seems to me like darkness and night was holding sway, but there is something worse, something more, something darker, even more sinister is on its way. It's like, be afraid, be very afraid. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 9 through 11, then they would deliver you up to tribulations and put you to death and you will be hated by all nations but for my name's sake and then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray Jesus was not talking to unbelievers he was addressing the believers they will put they will deliver you up to tribulations and put you to death and you will be hated by all nations for my name's sake. The morning is coming, but also the night. There's a time coming like none before, a time never before and will never be again. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 24, verse 20 and 21, pray that your flight may not be in winter or on a Sabbath, for then there will be great tribulation such as has not been from the beginning of the world until now. No, and never will be again. A time of night is decreed for us. Jesus is not talking to the world here. He is talking to his followers. He's talking to you and to me. He said a time of night is coming and he described it as the great tribulation, a time of persecution, a time of death, a time of unrest for the people of God. God said that we are the watchmen on the wall. Us, we, the Christians, we are the watchmen. We are to announce what time of day. We are to announce what time of the night it is. We are to announce what's going on. We are to announce danger, danger, danger. We should discern the times and we should advise what to do. The thing to do right now is to draw close to God. We are to pay attention. We are to pray. We are to make sure our loved ones are ready to meet their God. The watchman said, if you're going to inquire, then inquire. If not, come back. Come back later. Come back some other time. Jeremiah 6 verse 17 said, I set watchmen over you saying, pay attention to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, we will not pay attention. Those who will not pay attention will meet a dreadful end. The trumpet has sounded. The clarion call is announced. Repent and believe. Repent and live. Jesus is coming back real, real soon. We must keep watching. We must keep praying. We must have our house in order. And when Jesus comes back, he will find us doing what we are supposed to be doing. But yet we have porn watching ministers, racist preachers. And what's in it for me, shepherds, who cause division and lead the flock astray? Look at two scriptures with me. Ezekiel chapter 34 and Isaiah 56. Ezekiel 34 verse 1 through 4 says, The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, even to the shepherds. Thus says the Lord God, ah, shepherds of Israel who have been feeding yourselves. Should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat. You clothe yourselves with the wool. You slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. The weak you have not strengthened. The weak you have not healed. The injured you have not bound up. The strayed you have not brought back. The lost you have not sought. And with force and harshness you have ruled them. I want you to look also with me at Isaiah 56, verse 10 through 11. His watchmen are blind. They're all without knowledge. They're all silent dogs. They cannot bark. Dreaming, lying down, loving to slumber. The dogs have a mighty appetite. They never have enough. They are shepherds who have no understanding. They have all turned 
to their own way, each to his own game, one and all. Political correctness has blinded the eyes of the shepherds. Ease of life has lulled them to sleep. Their success is numerical and not spiritual. They never warn the flock of the coming disasters. Dumb dogs that do not bark. Each and every one who do these things. Jesus told us that when we see these things begin to happen, we are to look up for our redemption draweth nigh. Think about it. Is not the time right? Isn't everything pretty much in place and the people programmed just the way that they want? Doubt and confusion run rampant. Almost everyone is programmed to think a certain way. Everything is in place. The laws are in place. The people are in the right places and are all in the high positions. Debt burdens every family and every nation is weighed down and the borrower is a slave to the lender. Watchman, what time of the night? Watchman, what time of the night? Morning comes also the night. There's a night coming, a day of the Lord that is on its way. Look at what God says about the day of the Lord in Joel chapter 3 verse 14 through 16. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. He says, for the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and the moon shall be darkened and the stars shall withdraw their shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem and the heavens and the earth shall shake. And the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Watchmen, sound the alarm. Watchmen, blow the trumpet. Watchmen, warn the people. For the day of the Lord is near, is even at the door. For many, it's, it'll be a day of darkness. It'll be a day of fear. A day of terror and dread. A day of distress and misery. No ungodly will escape. No amount of money will buy a pardon. No amount of silver or gold will purchase amnesty for those who have sinned against our God. For those who have needlessly and willingly shed innocent blood. Those who show no mercy. No mercy will be shown to them for the innocent blood cries out to God for justice there is a dreadful day of reckoning awaiting for those who imprison the innocent and set the guilty free for those who call evil good and good evil for those who curse the name of our God and the name of his son against such his, his anger will flare. Against such will his indignation be poured out. The day is near. That time has come. The valley of decision is upon you. Decide this day whom you will serve. Decide this day which you will choose. Choose life. Reject death. This is your last opportunity. This could be your last opportunity to choose life and live. For our God has promised hope to his people. For them, it will be a day of salvation, a day of peace, a day of restoration, a bright and beautiful day, a day of rejoicing and reunion with loved ones who have gone on before us. I'm here today to tell you that weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. There will be joy for the people of the Lord. Joy for those who are waiting for the return of Jesus. Peace, peace, peace I proclaim. May the shalom of peace of God rest upon his people. Strengthen them to endure the night, for the joy cometh in the morning. You may be in the valley of decision. Have you decided? You may be at the crossroads. Have you made a decision which way you will turn and to whom you will serve? Have you decided to choose life and reject death? Jesus is waiting. He offers hope. He offers life. He is waiting patiently and he's watching for his prodigal sons 
to return. He is watching. He is waiting for his prodigal daughters to return. Have you had enough of playing Russian roulette? Jesus' arms are open wide. Jesus is waiting for his sons and his daughters to come home. Will you come home? Will you ask Jesus for his forgiveness? He's waiting to give you life. Life eternal. All you have to do is to ask. Here's how. If you are in the valley of decision, if you're ready to make peace with God, are you ready to accept Him as Lord and Savior and receive eternal life? Pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, Forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Help me to live for you. Help me to be a witness for you. Help me to be a light in this darkness. That I might be obedient to your word. Help me to hold fast through the night. For, for weeping may endure for the night. Joy cometh in the morning. Thank you for your joy. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for your peace. I receive it all now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, the Lord is faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What I would like for you to do is to buy yourself a Bible, highlight those, um, those verses, those promises that mean, mean something to you. And Jesus will be faithful. He will forgive you. If you've asked, and then he will, he, he will fulfill every promise that he has made to you. Find yourself a church, a Bible-believing church. Not one of those progressive churches who compromise the word of God, who teaches a different doctrine, but who believes in holiness, who believes that Jesus is there is a right way and a wrong way to live. Join that church. Be discipled in that church. And, to, and when Jesus comes back, He'll find you doing what it is that he, he called you to do. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you so very much. The Lord bless you. I'm Kenny Yates. Be blessed and stay blessed.